divorce is the most painful thing you could ever, ever go through. What stage are y'all at in y'all marriage? Um, hmm, I, I would define well, it as separated. <laughs> I yeah. would. I would define yeah, it as separated. separated. Yeah. yeah. So y'all are separated. Um, have y'all had talks about divorce? Yes. Yeah. Y'all had serious talks about divorce. Let's take a step back. Let's go back 25 years ago. Uh, Jewel, what made you decide to marry Tavia? I made vows. I broke them. Hindsight, I didn't comprehend the gravity of the exchange of this solemn promise. A vow. Before God and man. It's time to unpack these sacred words so that I never take this oath lightly ever again. I'm Latera Sar Whitfield, and this is the Marriage Vow series on the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Latera Sar Whitfield. Listen, I'm so excited about today's guest. But before we move on to today's guest, let's take care of some little house rules are you still shacking up with us come on y'all I, I see that you have a commitment issue well i noticed that 50 percent of the people who watch our podcast still aren't subscribed and so we're about to hit 60,000 subscribers so just think about it. if everybody who watched the podcast subscribe we'll be at 120,000 subscribers by now but listen, make a commitment, hit that subscription bell, turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified every time we drop an episode. I'm so excited about this series, the Marriage Vow series. God has been unpacking um, these marriage vows and it's getting extremely powerful. I'm getting a lot of DMs, emails about how your lives have been transformed and set free from this series. So I definitely take it as an honor. And this episode is going to go really, really deep. It's going to be extremely powerful. So I'm very humbled by the opportunity to sit down with my friends to be able to um, allow them to just keep it lit. Um, so without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My homies, Jewel and Tavia Whitlow. Hello. Hello. How y'all doing, man? Um, I'm feeling good because, you know, ever since you started this podcast, I was like, uh, and you always talk, you gonna be on there. He ain't ask me, like, what's up? But let me tell you something. This is how intentional God is, is that I know you would joke about, no, maybe you wasn't joking. You were serious, huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, yeah, she was serious. Yeah, she was serious. So yeah. she wasn't joking about being on there. But I said, you know, if, 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 you know, God got the final say. What people don't realize is that I literally allow God to be the executive producer of my podcast. So it's stories because this is my personal journey that I'm taking the audience on is that stories have to resonate with me. And I believe that God has to put people in my life, not only um, for the audience to glean information, but for them to pour into me. And so uh, it's been such a great honor having you guys actually agree to be on the podcast. So uh, thank y'all for being here. Thank you, Jewel, for for uh, being here. I got to thank Jewel because y'all understand Jewel uh, an undercover thug. So yeah, you he know, did. he yeah. said I was a thug with yeah. my feelings. Yeah, yeah, he's a thug with his feelings. Right. Yeah, he's a thug with his feelings. You know what I'm saying? So it's just it's just quite interesting. And I, but we will talk about how God moves in powerful ways. Yeah. Today's episode is called "For Better or For Worse." For better or for worse. Y'all been married going on 24 years now, right? No, going on 25. 25? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we've met, we've been married for 24. Yeah. Our anniversary is in January. January 20th. Yep. January the 20th. I'm going to read um, something that I posted December the 29th in 2015. You guys are at a crossroads. And we're going we're gonna to go deeper into that. But I want to start the podcast off this episode reading what I wrote December the 29th 2015 <clears throat> I was married January the 14th um, our marriage was supposed to be January the 21st but we moved it up so it's interesting how close our anniversaries are December 29th, 2015, I sat in the lobby filled with petitioners awaiting for the judge's stamp of approval that would define our marital statuses it was comfortably uncomfortable. My mind journeyed to nine years, 11 months, and two weeks ago. 
standing before a pastor in a church stating vows to declare love forever. Soon I will be standing in front of a judge in this courthouse to certify the end date to forever. The tragic irony. Never thought this day would come. Today, I divorced my best friend, my wife, the woman I promised to grow old with, the muse of my grind. The reasons would only sound as justification to bring credence to my vow break, and so I'll refrain from details to what led to my decision. I will, however, offer the plausible reasoning. It just didn't work out. I'm fully aware this lame excuse will lead to much head scratching, but unfortunately, it would have to suffice. Just know we tried. Marriage counseling was a norm. Spiritual development programs were a way of life for me. I fasted. I prayed. I, I fought for my marriage. Lamentably, I came to the decision we were better off friends. Now, to be honest, we still are. I truly thank God for that. At weddings, many people are present to stand in agreement. However, at a divorce, it's lonely. Your spouse isn't even required to be in attendance. Interesting, huh? There I stood, answering a series of questions, 11 to be exact, that would instantly be followed by the judge's endorsement. Granted, just like that, my marriage was dissolved. Marriage is the most beautiful institution God created. I still believe. I wrote that in 2015 after being married, like I said, two weeks shy of 10 years. Mm -hmm. And divorce is the most painful thing you could ever, ever go through. What stage are y'all at in y'all marriage? Um, I, I would define well, it as separated. <laughs> I yeah. would. I would define yeah, it as separated. separated. Yeah. yeah. So y'all are separated. Um, have y'all had talks about divorce? Yes. Yeah. Y'all yeah. had serious talks about divorce. Let's take a step back. Let's go back 25 years ago. Uh, Jewel, what made you decide to marry Tavia? What made me decide to marry her? You know, because, man, we don't have to get married. You know, no. it's something that we we decide, we choose. No, I think that for me at the time, I was, um, I mean, well, we got married, I was 22 and a half, right? Young young man. And um, I was kind of tired of playing, you know, at the brief time that I did. Because <laughs> you're still young. <laughs> because I was still 22, you know, <laughs> so um, I was tired of playing. And uh, she. it felt like she was the one in my heart. I knew she was the one. But I wasn't emotionally ready to be married. So right. I was physically married, but emotionally, I really, I wasn't. I wasn't ready to be. I was ready to be responsible. Right. Um, and I can take care of things, but emotionally, I wasn't ready. But it was like, okay, that, you know, we had children. I was like, I got to do right by, mm -hmm. by, by my children and by her and by God and what I saw my dad do. So I was like, uh, you know, let me do the right thing. So you had how many kids at that time? Um, man, we had, we two. had two. We had two. two at the time. Yeah, two, two kids. Time. Twenty-two yeah. years old. Yeah. And Tavia, how old were you at that time? Well, well, I thought 22, 23, 22. 22 going, 22, yeah. 22 like going yeah. on yeah, 23. Yeah. Um, January, I turned yeah. 23 in May, so. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So she's I'm a year, year younger than after oh, him. I'm not supposed to say that. But. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm about, we scratched it. I'm not a year <laughs> younger. I'm about 11 years younger. <laughs> he said 11 years younger. <laughs> about 11 so years younger. 22, you was, yeah, you, 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 know, you should have been in jail. I'm, you should have been right, in jail. Right. I'm oh, saying, no. you know, I then so. I was a year <laughs> behind him. Now I'm, you know, about that don't even 11 sound years. Right. That right. That that even right. that. I'm just saying, <laughs> forever 35. So y'all were young. Did people yeah. encourage y'all to get married? Did y'all have like your parents telling you, hey, well, you know, did you feel pressure to get married or or what? Um, for me, to be very honest with you, um, I was I was insecure. And and it's because, you know, growing up as a darker tone young girl, you know, boys wasn't checking for me like that. And it really made me insecure. And even though I was very young, I still you know, wanted a uh, love. I mm -hmm. still wanted, you know, a guy or, and maybe I was searching for that because I didn't have it from my dad. So, but I knew even at that young age, I just wanted to be loved and just needed that. And my insecurities were very low and deep. It wasn't the kind that you would be able to tell because a lot of people still can't believe that I was insecure. Mm. So I was to the point to where I'm like, well, I'm not going to probably ever get a husband if I don't 
take this opportunity to get mm -hmm. one now. So, uh, and it's not to say that I didn't um, love him. Um, I believe that we both loved each other, but we both had our own reasons as to why we yes. decided to get married. Yes, good and we point. were yeah. so ignorant <clears throat> to marriage. I definitely was. And yes. when I saw that he had his parents, they were still married. I had never seen that before. How long were they married? How long have they been? Are you still married? No, no, my my dad passed. In okay, he passed away. Sorry right. to hear that. They but were, you watched them. Yeah, they, they were great role models of what marriage looked like. Yeah. Well, yes and no. <laughs> yeah. Yes and yeah. no. Um, they they were married at the time before he passed. Thirty six years. Thirty six years. So for me, I saw my dad take care of the house, take care of mom, make sure everything was taken care he of. Was he, he was responsible. <clears throat> yeah. That's what you meant yeah. by where you said that you saw marriage as the next step to responsibility. Yeah, yeah. and with children. And to your, answer your question about us uh, being encouraged, not really. I had people saying, man, what you doing? What you getting married for? The her? You know, and it was Even like. Even with two kids, they yeah, said, why? I was like, well, her? And my, my parents were like, well, you know, my dad was like, you know, what are you going to do? You got to do the right thing. You know, basically he was like, you know, man up or what? Yeah. You know, uh, and my mom was like, you can't keep playing around with her. You know, what you going to do? I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm not trying to hear this. But <laughs> <laughs> So I had made a decision. I said, you know what? I got to do right by what I know to be the right thing. So, and and what was crazy is when I met Tavia. Did y'all meet high this, school? No, we met, we met working at a, um, a, at a job. job. Yeah. Yeah. A, job a mutual friend kind of threw us in, into a awkward conversation on how we met. <laughs> yeah. um, but I had this feeling that I was supposed to be with her, but I didn't know what that meant. I just knew what I was supposed to be with her. She felt the one. And yeah. You know, people say they have that yeah. feeling, the one. I knew she was the one, but at, at 22, I didn't know what that nah, meant. Nobody Because marriage was the furthest thing from my mind. You know, 22. I'm, I'm turning up. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm having a <laughs> good time. And then it's like, oh. <laughs> Especially <laughs> like, what's it, the age of y'all youngest uh, daughters? How old? She's uh, 23. She's 23. That's what I'm talking about. So yeah, you're talking about somebody her age. Could you even imagine her getting married right now? Yeah. Uh, no. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'd be like, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> I did that. Let me, here's what happened. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's interesting. So you said you, y'all met, y'all got thrust in, uh, into a conversation with wait each other. Wait, 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 wait. We ain't even date a year. Oh, uh, y'all didn't? No. What you mean y'all didn't date a year? I didn't know her a year before we got married. But how you well, have to no, how you have some kids? No, no, no. Um, so we met in ninety-five. So we wasn't twenty-two and twenty-one when we met. I think right. we were uh, maybe a couple because we got married in ninety-seven. Yeah. We met in ninety-five. So we did? yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't remember. No, I don't remember. <laughs> we met in ninety five. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. It had to be ninety five or oh, ninety six. Maybe it was 96. She Gosh, we both don't remember why right? it's been so long. She corrected me. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, 90, 95 because Jay was born in 96. Okay. Oh, my God. So uh, Yeah, y'all just, just back up from your kids. <laughs> right. Yeah, just start from your kids' right. age and back up. Matt tells it all. There you go. So definitely 95. And, right. um, you know, we just, it was, you know, fun. I thought it was a cute guy, you know. And we were just, like you said, young. Yeah. And, you know, I never thought in a million years, you know, that I'm looking at this guy that's going to, I'm going to be married to him in a couple of yeah. years. Never thought that. Yeah. yeah. And um, we we wasn't together, um, had the kid, um, got back together. Oh, so y'all went together when the kid was uh, was born. Right, no, right. My first, first daughter was born. Right. We together. Yeah. Got back together. And then we were always together. And mm -hmm. then I'm like, okay, so um, I don't know what we're going to do. And then, like, as he said, his parents were kind of, you know, asking him the same question. So it what just seemed like. Well, let's back up. His, she, the way she said, what are we going to do? She, she didn't say it that nice. <laughs> you know what, she said, what, are we, what are we doing? I'm like. What you mean? What we doing? I'm like, we, we good. <laughs> you know what? He said we good. Talking about hey, like, we got uh, we got these kids. We good. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm like, I don't know what the next step is. You know, and, and then I was like, all right, yeah, let's you know, let's, and that's really was the first proposal. Was like, all right, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Fine. Yes, I'll do it. You know? Yes, I'll do it. And y'all got married. And y'all didn't have a big wedding. Y'all just tell us about how y'all decided to get married. Um, I tell you, <laughs> I walked into the, the cafeteria where we were working. And I said, all right, yeah. All right. 
She's talking about, oh, yeah, what? Well, I said, yeah, I'll marry you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, my God. And he's trying to make it seem like I asked him. So, ladies, I did not ask this man to marry me because every time he tells this story, it comes off hey. like I was like, will you Fellas, marry me? Now, you know no. when you get that ultimatum. You know what I'm saying? It was like, what we doing? We ain't checking. I'm not going to be with you. Oh, oh man. All right, y'all see, I was living together at this time. Y'all have been dating. Y'all have two kids. Yeah. And she gave an ultimatum to say, hey, listen, I ain't finna be just sitting up here shacking up with you, so make a decision. That part. And then you was like, all right. Yeah. I didn't say it in those words exactly. Well, I, I mean, know. But it was implied. It was that, yeah, it was implied. I mean, yes. women do it all the time. It's like, yeah, listen. Exactly. And it's okay. Yeah, it's like it's saying okay. that, listen, okay. I, I have kids with you. We living together while we playing house. So what we what we doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the old saying is S or get off the pot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the yeah. that's right. the reality. Yeah, right. So it's nothing wrong with that to be intentional. But um, when you're 22 years old and 23, uh, your frontal lobe is just getting developed. It's yeah. just gotten developed, yeah. you know, around 21. Yeah. And so it's your, your reasoning and decision making is just yeah. very flighty. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so um, yeah. but so you got married. And how did y'all get married? We talked about the wedding. Did y'all have a wedding? No, we went to his mom had a <laughs> friend that was a pastor. And yeah. literally, I remember it was on a Tuesday. Um, I I don't remember what he had on, but you I remember, remember what, you what had I had on. after work on a Tuesday. Yeah, but I remember <laughs> what Tuesday. I had on. Like, mm -hmm. But I'm saying, because I specifically loved this jean dress jean. that I them used denim dresses to wear. Yeah, yeah, they nice? some kind oh of my denim God. outfit she had on. Yeah. I loved that dress so much. So I, you know, um, you know, put that on because I knew this was my favorite dress and mm -hmm. I wanted to wear it when I got married. And we went to the office and <laughs> this man, he was an older guy. He could not pronounce my name. And Every time he would get to my name, he would be like, what's your name again? <laughs> and, and then he Octavia. He kept, said, I said, Octavia. My Octavia. My Octavia. Baby. <laughs> then he said, baby. Baby. Stop calling me baby. <laughs> And, and I was like, for years, I was like, I didn't marry Octavia, I married Baby. <laughs> <laughs> like, we got a question, are we really married? Because I don't know. Like, are we really married? He said I, Baby. I yes. married somebody named Baby, and it wasn't really Octavia. So I was like, so when we go through our thing, I, I'm not really married to you, Octavia. <laughs> so, he said Baby. Yeah. It was God, hilarious. No. Yeah, sure. You know, and then the thing is this, you know, even though he had the parents, yeah. I did not have that picture i don't believe that either of us still had that guidance like yeah. we we didn't we still didn't know what we were doing because even his parents were there with us and the first thing his dad said never forget he just put his hand on his shoulder and said okay son now you got to get your own insurance <laughs> <laughs> it was like no congratulations no that's what he said that's how he said you gotta you. get your own insurance now son yeah, uh. <laughs> and then he started then he was like hey you got to get your house. He wouldn't even, you know, we didn't even grow into yeah. learning how to, yeah. what a responsibility of a house was. Yes. So here so. we were 20 years old with three kids. Um, We had a, we built a house. Like we built a house and had the dog, the, the fish, yeah, so, the two cars. <laughs> so we got married, ended up moving into the apartment. And I was like, I, I don't live in apartments. I need a house. So within the next year, bought the bought, built the house, um, and in ninety eight, July ninety eight, mm -hmm. built the house, and I was like, man, I got the house, dog, white picket fence, <laughs> all that, it, I, and I we got were the whole yeah. thing. Going yeah. There. So at twenty three, twenty four years old, yeah. So mm. to her, to her, to her point about guidance, my mom and dad, um, very traditional, right, value wise, and my dad. He was the breadwinner, um, didn't have really show any emotion towards my mom um, as far as as far as loving on and kissing and telling her love. He was like, mm -hmm. you know what you like, go get it. You know, he was because yeah. he was he was just focused on taking care of the family. Yes. So I tell men with sons, you have to nurture your sons. Yes. To be emotional. Yes. And be able to express because. We don't get that at our all. Fathers and my generation, I'm sure your generation. Yep. Um, we missed out on that. 
you know, and it affects how we develop in a relationship. 100%. And I talk about, you know, it took me a long time to understand emotional maturity. There it is. Um, I still, I'm, I'm 48. I still struggle with emotional maturity. Yeah. Most um, men do because it's a, um, it's an ever evolving thing. Yep. You know, I have good days and bad days with emotional maturity, you know? Um, so it's just one of those things. And so, um, when you look at that and it crosses over into marriage, how do you feel that your emotional immaturity has played uh, a huge factor in how you love Tay? Well, to be honest, in the beginning, I did not know how to love her. I didn't know how to love her because Good. I was um, trying to love me, you know, and I was I was insecure with me. I was insecure too, being young. Um, what was your insecurities? It was behind not feeling valued. Mm. Um, as men, even young men, we're taught to suppress our feelings and yep. we're not encouraged to develop. Uh, our emotional health, right? And affirm, you know, we're told, oh, you handsome, oh, you cute, you fine, or whatever, and you can, that can go one, two ways yep. first, guys, right? And yep. I did for a while in terms of, like, I know I was a nice looking guy. I was like, yeah, you know, I know I'm a fly guy, you yep. know, nice looking brother, but, you know, still have those It wasn't enough. But that was behind some things that happened in my childhood. So I, I had a, like I just recently told her and opened up to her, and, you know, you got to be really honest about, in a, in a relationship, even a marriage, um, when a man becomes emotionally vulnerable and you shut him down, you have pretty much closed the door on him opening back up. Yes. And I don't think that that's talked about a lot because young boys are taught to suppress their feelings and emotion. What do we do if he's playing football? He's crying. He's crying on the field. Yeah. Suck, Suck it, it up. up. Get up. <laughs> Tough it up. See? Tough it out, boy. Get yeah. up. You'll be all right. Stop crying. You yeah, ain't a little crying. punk. You're What's punk, wrong with right? you? Get so up. That has a long lasting effect. Yeah. So women want us to be vulnerable, but we can't be vulnerable because we've been ostracized for being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So in a relationship, even with her, I, I just, I think I just, this has probably been a good week for us, you know, despite the separation. Um, Cause one of the things I told her, I said, I'm trying to be your friend. Good. Right now, because I'm good. Like, we weren't for a good. long time, and um, I'm just like, well, you know, <laughs> you you call me, man. What you? What's going? What you doing? What's going on? I'm like, oh, I got to answer to so. <laughs> because he stopped me at Costco. He was like, man, what? I said, man, I'm out. I'm done. I'm out of here. Yeah, uh -huh. I just couldn't deal with that. So I was working on a project <laughs> with, with with Tavia, and she was doing makeup for a shoot that I had, and um. She was just like, yeah, man, I just got to talk to you about something. I was like, what? And she told me, yeah, me and Jewel, we ain't together right now. Yeah. And something hit me. When I tell you, yeah. I don't know what it was, but something hit me so heavy that I almost broke down crying in front of her. I said, like, why is that? Why is this affecting me? I, kept, I had to check myself and say, why is this affecting me? I don't go hang out with them. We don't go kick it. We don't, you know, it's like we may have gone went to uh, lunch on, the, on for my birthday or something when I shot y'all's uh, 20 year uh, vow renewal. Right. But it hurt. It hurt. And then I was like, God, what? Is this supposed to happen? Are they supposed to get a divorce? Or what? what is this? And I didn't have any answers for it. And so then I said, God, just. Do what you do best. I never see you out anywhere. And we at Costco and we run into each other. Yeah. And then I say, Drew, what's going on? I'm good. I'm good. You good? Yeah, everything fine. You sure? <laughs> what you talking about? I said, you fine. Everything fine. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm just up here just getting this. I said, what you got right here? poking me. Yeah, just poking you. I'm, I'm going to keep poking you. And then you was like, no, nah, I mean, no, nah, everything fine. I said, oh, okay. I see you got the little seaweed snack. So I try to take the conversation somewhere. Oh, how are those? That's great. Blah, 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 blah. Because men, again, you got you. You can't just push a man because they be like, say, nigga, I ain't got nothing. To, you know, yeah, so yeah, so yeah. I just I was just like, so, oh, yeah, those snacks. I've been wanting to try that. Oh, yeah. He opened up the package, uh, gave me one of the little seaweed little things. Hey, nasty as all get out, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I try eating it. I don't want to waste a little seaweed you they stuff. Was an acquired taste, oh my you. god! It's like I just put my mouth in the ocean and just started drinking or something. I'm like, what is this? This is nasty. Right. So, so he gave me a little seaweed snack, and I was like, I said, "Are you all right?" Yeah, I'm good. I'm just doing this. Are you really all right? Yeah. What? 
You must talk to Tavia. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. I said, yeah, I did. What's going on, man? Man, I just, I just, I just. What did you say in that moment? I said, I felt like um, where I'm at, I said, I've carried her as far as I can take her. Yep. And I felt like that at this point in time, you know, I have nothing else to give. And what I heard in that moment, it's a, it's a, as, first of all, I'm going to ask you this, Tavia, how does that sound to you? Um, She's heard it, it before. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard you say, I've heard it before. Yeah. So I'm saying, well, how do you interpret that? And I'm going to tell you how I felt about it. Okay. Um, well, when he said, I've heard it before, those times, yeah, I was like, okay, we're in an argument, whatever. But that last time, it was different. And it wasn't just because he was different, I was different. And I knew that this was something I was about to do different. So I took it like, this is real and I got to get real serious with God right now. That's exactly how I took it. When I heard this brother say that, first of all, it's a sign of vulnerability. A man, we're not taught to say that we don't have it all together. We're not taught to say yeah. that I've done all that I can and I can't do anything else. That's a vulnerable statement for a man to admit, mm -hmm. especially to another man. Yeah. When he said that, my heart just broke because I know what he meant. I knew what he felt. I felt his pain. Brother to brother, iron sharpening iron, I heard him loud and clear. But what I also heard is that even though it felt like he was already out, I felt something that he was still hanging on by a thread. And that's all God needs in order for, to make a miracle, just a thread. That's it. Yeah. So I was just sitting there and I was like, wow, this is this is interesting. I said, whoo. I said, I felt it. It was heavy. I'm about to break down crying yeah. in the middle of uh, the Costco parking lot talking to this dude. <laughs> and I just I just left. And then I said, <clears throat> should I tell Tavia this conversation I had? I said, nah, I ain't going to cover this dude. I'm just going to let that play out. And then a couple of weeks went by or whatever. And then we ended up talking one day. And I said, I talked to him. He's like, what you talking about? I said, we talked. <laughs> yeah. That's what I said. We talk. <laughs> yeah. Because what I, the reason why I said that is because I wanted to keep a safe space with my brother. Yeah. And I wanted to make sure that I'm protecting him and honoring you, protecting you and honoring him, and then allowing God to be God yes. to create this. Mm. Because if I came prematurely and said something and did this or whatever, and he's like, well, how he tell you that? Well, I had and then it can cause something crazy. Right. So I just plant the seed. Let God water it. And this is what happened. Yeah. Can't tell you what's going to spring forth from this situation, but I do know that God is in it because y'all wouldn't be here right now. Exactly. <laughs> so we had a conversation a couple of days ago and I called Jewel. Jewel and I was just talking. God laid him on my heart and I said, let me call Jewel and check up on my brother. I said, Jewel, what's going on? He's like, oh, I'm just doing this, 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 this. And we just start, we start talking. Mm -hmm. And then he started talking about how he, he dropped a nugget. And I said, Hold on, bro. I said, that's that's pretty deep, bro. You you got you got some gems in. He's like, yeah, I've done, you know, I've done a friend's podcast before. We talk about relationships. I said, hmm. <laughs> I said, talking about relationship, huh? I said, you know, I'm in the marriage vow. So he said, yeah, I watched I watched the episode with Bashe and Tara and, and all that. That was powerful. Uh, what did you say resonated with you from that podcast episode? With um, Rache and his wife. Yeah. I think uh, if I recall correctly, I know I was talking about when she was talking about the, the God in him, loving the God in him. I know that stuck out. Yeah. Um, but um, I don't remember exactly what I what I said that resonated with me on that one. Um, outside of that, there was a lot because I watched the, I watched a couple of the different episodes. But let uh, me tell you what you said that was deep, and I'm telling you, men don't talk like this you said yeah i watched that episode it's powerful i had to go take notes yeah see oh, i did yeah when a man yeah, said I he's did. taking notes that means he's doing work i did 
And I'm so taking notes on a number of different episodes. That's what I'm saying. So I knew that whatever I didn't even know he was watching it. Let's be let's be clear about that. Oh no, you did because I told you. When oh, we was at the thing. parking lot. I said I'm not shacking up with you. Oh yeah, did. you did say that. I said I, I went and subscribed. I'm not shacking because I was shacking up for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all out there, don't be shacking up. There don't it is. In trouble like I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell him, Jewel. But even with watching it, I didn't know how consistent it was. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I have friends yeah. that watch it. Yeah, I ain't been able to watch the last couple of episodes. I need to catch up. I need to catch up. But you seem to be pretty consistent. And then when you was telling me that, you said, yeah, I'm taking notes. I said, what? Yeah. Because we're always, what we always see is women taking notes for spiritual development and all that and learning and getting, being, becoming yes. a part of programs and stuff. And for <clears> this <throat> brother to say, yeah, I'm taking notes. I said, oh, God, yeah. look at you. Yeah. I hear it. I didn't, I didn't blow that up and be like, what are you taking notes? Oh, I'm so proud of you. That's so great that you're doing this. I said, oh. But you know what, Latarius, for us men um, in relationships, and granted, you know, for me, this 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 relationship is the longest one I've had my in my whole life because it's been most of my adult have life. Your life. Yeah, yeah. You know, have your life. Um, your lives, life. Yeah. Men, men, men have a hard time being vulnerable. Period. And I can't express to you. That's where a lot of depression comes in. With yes. Men and and serious health issues. Because yes. We don't have an outlet. You know, there are tons of outlets for women, women empowerment and things, that, you know, sisters behind sisters. But most men have a tribe. But, man, that tribe is so, so diverse <laughs> that you can sway one way or the other. <laughs> Real your easily. Tribe, Real and easily. If your tribe is not really someone who's an accountability partner. Yeah. Then <clears throat> you're really out in, in the wilderness. <laughs> And you don't know, you know, you have your faith in God. And, you know, granted, I hadn't been talking to God. You know, I was like, yeah, you know, God, I said, why did you forsake me? And yep. you know, why am I going through this? And I'm like, OK, you know what? I have this thing I say, I turn my ears off, mm. you know, and so I'm not listening to nobody. But I expressed to my wife, I said, you know, I need to. I said, when I when when, when I get quiet, she said, you shut down, you turn off your emotions. I said, I have to get quiet and I have to take a step back and gather my thoughts and gather my being before I do something brash or something out of character for me, because it's real easy to do when you're acting emotion. And she would say that, Oh, you're acting out of emotion. I said, no, I said, I'm like, I don't want to talk. Just leave me alone. Give me a minute. And it, but it wouldn't. And be you feel nice. as rejection, don't you? <laughs> when, when he shuts down like that. <laughs> oh yeah, because he said he need time with God. though. No. how much time you need? I mean, I like, granted, it be four five weeks. Like, it don't take that long. It could man. be considered excessive sometimes. You know, I mean, <laughs> so four or five weeks. Good you know? Lord, man! Like, dude, it, it, and to me, it feels like he's not moving. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because he just so, had a stalemate. Yes. So, uh. and when you're in those states, do you ever do you ever tell yourself I'm a only detached for a week or three days, or you just whenever you feel like coming back around? <laughs> so, with that, it's a learned behavior, right? So I'm in therapy. I, I'm seeing good a therapist, you know, just to deal with my own emotional good issues. But you know, and that takes courage to say you're in therapy. One hundred stigma on therapy would be yeah, um, but it's nothing bad about that. Not at all. Um, but you know, I've had to kind of talk myself through things and be like, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. all right, no, enough. Wait a minute, let's go. You know, because I'm I'm my own worst enemy. Yeah, we and, all are. And um, I can I can get in my own way. But you know, one thing I, I, I had I was reading back through some of my notes, and it said, "Why are you afraid to be great?" You know, and I was like, "Ooh, ooh." You know how I give great advice. And she, and she say, man, I don't, you don't listen to your own advice. <laughs> <laughs> Men out there, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, we know, you know? we know. Uh, and then be like, ooh, I did say that. Because <laughs> my friends, my, my close tribe, you know, that, that know me, know that I'm, I'm a very sensitive guy. And you wouldn't know that from my because you're a thug. Because <laughs> you're a thug with your emotions. My my rough rough, rough exterior that I put forth. <laughs> um, but your poker face. I'm, I'm a very sensitive guy, and you know what it was. I, in one of the podcasts, I think it was Brashear and um, the, the other nugget. Yeah, um, Bashe and Tyra. By, by Shay was um, uh, it was around um, women's words, how they can speak life and death into the yes. relationship. Yeah, and just in that, I was like, oh man, that's powerful because. Women don't know the power of their mouths yes. and how they will shut a man down yeah. and don't even know it. Yeah. And once you do that, because I told her that um, 
one day last week she was came she came in there and we were sitting in the office and we were talking because honestly Latarius, we just this week monday i mean well last week <laughs> just was like cool <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know. No, serious, yeah, yeah, serious. because when I talked I to him about that. being on the podcast, he said, he said, um, <laughs> what did I say? He said, well, I mean, you gotta, um, I don't know what the schedule is. I don't talk to him. He said, I just started talking to him. <laughs> no, you said, we ain't even talking, is what you said. We ain't even talking. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. I said, well. <laughs> Well, okay. Right. You know what I'm saying? I said, we all going to talk yeah. that day. Yeah. I said, so So I'm not yeah. intimidated by that stuff. But then it was like the fact that you were still willing. See, that's what I'm keep saying is that it's not about us having it all figured out. I don't have it figured out. You're looking at somebody <laughs> that was divorced. Y'all made it more years than I did. So y'all still have stuff to teach me. What I'm saying is that I always try to put myself in position to learn, to get better, to admit my faults, admit my mistakes and say, I don't know it all. But God, I know he <laughs> I know him that knows all, so just teach me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just teach me. I've come from a broken uh, uh, family structure where I didn't watch my dad be the best father, you know? And yeah. so, and, and I told myself I want to be everything opposite of him, but then I became a whole lot like him. Man, that's powerful because I said the same thing when I was talking to my mom, because she was like, you so much like your dad. <laughs> and I was like, I thought back, because I remember saying, I don't want to be like him. Yes. And I, by saying that, <laughs> verbalizing that, yeah. I became more like him. I think you he know? came down from wherever hey, and hey, got watch. inside and, and you know, resurrected himself. Resurrected you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, this is, they are identical. Yeah, man, that's just, because it's generational. I mean, yeah. that's what I say. And we talked about that in the last episode is about, uh, well, last two episodes, the men, we talked about generational curses, but what we need to do is change the trajectory of what we were taught and what we've seen and start speaking generational blessings. Uh, mm. But we just mm. don't know. It's just, it's just by default, like we <clears throat> are, it goes all the way back to the biblical times. I mean, it's like they were, they'll be like, he begat this person, he begat that person, your, your forefather was this and all that, and they, because you come from that lineage, then they expect great exploits from from you if your father was great if your father was a a shady person they'd be like don't trust him right. he's a gentile don't do it you know all that type of stuff based upon your lineage and so when we talk about that i think uh i thank you jewel for actually recognizing the same thing that i did which is i don't want to be like him but then you become everything like that you don't even know what he is you just say you don't like it but you don't know the process of how he got there right and then right. and then when you find yourself dealing with pain hurt then you act out and then you find yourself doing the exact same thing and it's yeah. crazy it's a cycle so we have to stop that cycle um tay mm -hmm. we talked a lot about jewel and his deficiencies and you talked about his 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 revelations that he's gotten i talked to you and you just won't give up on this marriage. Why is that? <laughs> uh, because we're supposed to be together. We're supposed to be married. Um, there were times when I thought that I was going to give up because I wasn't happy either. You know, and I think that was a misconception um, to my husband. I believe that, you know, when he said he was done and if um, that he didn't believe that I was done too. You know, it's yeah. like, like he had the power to say, and I would tell him all the time, you don't get to decide that we're done like this. That's not your choice by yourself. You know? Right. But this time around, you know, actually last year, last year around the summertime last year, I was done. Mm -hmm. I was completely done. And then I had to sit down in a room and pray. And God said, no, no, you're not. What does you your know? done look like? Does your done look like? A verbal thing and you're finna withdraw emotionally or you're done look like I'm moving out. I'm done and I'm finna go file papers. Well, last year I definitely um, had spoke to an attorney last year because I was really completely out of there. And I didn't I was thinking that I didn't um, love him anymore. And that is why I couldn't be, you know, the wife that he kept saying I was supposed to be. Right. But it was like, I was so dumb because every time we would get into an argument, it was always this to him. You know, right. you know he was pointing to the finger at me all the mm -hmm. time. Would never own up to how we got here 
as the part he played in it. Right. And every time I would say, but you do this and you didn't do that. And then, and it just be horrible. The argument would just be hard. It's just a circle. Yeah. So I got tired of the circle, just like he got tired of. So that's what my thing was. You tired and I'm tired. Yeah. As well. Mm -hmm. But I never really just. I could never give. Even though I talked to this attorney, I was like, oh no, I just I. It's my husband. I'm going to stand beside him. You know, I'm I'm going to stand stand beside beside him. him, You know, and so I started to pray and I started to, um, you know, ask God to change me. And I literally started changing, right? But I was thinking I was changing not for the marriage. I thought I was just changing because, I don't know, something about to go down and I need to be different. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, so, and I started changing. I started praying differently, but I still was not praying for my marriage. And in my prayers, I would cry and say, God, why can't I pray for this mm, marriage? That's good. And then when we got to, so we're in our fourth month of this separation, right? And your separation looked like what? Y'all don't live with each other no more? Uh, we do for now. Um, but well, we're, we separated in the house. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Like well, this I mean, nice old beautiful house y'all just built. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but hold on, he hold on. Yeah, cause you had the floor. Who's the boo? <laughs> what you been saying? So, <laughs> you, you, so you want to make it at twenty five? <laughs> <laughs> keeping it real. I, 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 no, but no, but I you know what? Like I was telling you earlier, this time felt different. So we had this argument. What was crazy was we had went somewhere. We, my nephew had a um, graduation. We went to the graduation. Um, and keep in mind the entire leading up to the graduation, we've just really been existing. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so we go to the graduation, we go out to dinner, the dinner, the people was like a two and a half hour wait. It was a mess. And we had some uh, older ladies with us. Um, and you know, um, finally an appetizer come out that I had ordered and, and I was literally, because I was sitting where I was sitting, they had placed the appetizer on this side. And because they were older ladies, you know, I just said, Hey, you guys, I know you're really hungry. Cause I've been waiting for two and a half hours. You can, you know, have some, you know, if you want it. And I turned to him and I said, Hey, do you want some? And it was just the way that he responded to me was so angry. You know, like you, I can't even believe you didn't ask me first. And when he said that, I was like, whatever, okay. And I just went on, right? I know my husband. Mm -hmm. I know when he's upset with me. Number one, he won't call me all day. (laughs) He won't text me. He won't. It's just his behavior, right? So I know him, how he is. I let that go on for a few days. That Monday rolled around. I literally could have just left and just let it be how it always is. But something in me said, no, we're going to do this today. And... I, we finally get into it. I, and I'm making him, I'm making him say what he really want to say. Mm-hmm. And when he, Poking the bear, I did it. <laughs> and, and I was like, we going to do this today. Yeah. Cause we've been doing this for too long. Yeah. And if we're going to be married, something got to break. Yes. And, oh, and it broke and, that day. Oh, it broke, <laughs> oh, it it broke, broke that, that day. day. Yeah, broke that day. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Broke. She broke the heck out that day. Right <laughs> oh my God. This baby said, oh, Okay. Well, you know what? I don't even want to be married to you no more. I yeah. want a divorce. And I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> you just remember you said that. It's your idea. I said, <laughs> I know I said it. No, I and I meant it when I said it. Yeah. 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 Like, I said. You just remember that. You know, so of course when you're thinking you're in this heat of this yeah. moment, it's, it's what it is, right? But as time went on, the week went by. We, st- we not talking. We not, you know, nothing. And then I remember he sends me a text message. A week later, it was like that Monday was the week, and then that Friday comes. He sends me a text. I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm just letting you know I'm dissolving this marriage. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Next week. You know, I'm like, what? He said, trying to be mean, Jewel. You yeah, ain't trying to be did. mean. I did. And, at, and see, for two weeks, it went unreal, but I knew that it was real. And then when he said that, I immediately had to go to God. Like, I was like, God, what? is going on and I had to repent and I repent because that was the only way that I could really get my prayers up to him. Yes. So mm-hmm. I had to repent Good. and I asked God to forgive me and I re- literally felt some releasing. Um, and when I tell you, and my husband has 
this is his first time even knowing this. When I tell you I went deep, deep into prayer with God, when I went deep, 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 I can't eat. I've never been that deep before. And God started and the Holy Spirit shows up and he started guiding me to tell me what to do. And I'm like, but the whole time he's still for six weeks straight. This man wouldn't look at me, wouldn't say nothing to me. And when he would say one word to me, it would be very ugly. It would be just horrible. But God just said, just keep going. Just keep going. You don't worry about that. You, I'm changing you. Cause I have to change. I yeah. have to change. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and that's what I had to explain to him one time. Um, he said, I've seen you do this before. I said, you ain't seen me do this before. I said, the difference between when you want to change and by I said yourself. I read this book before. You said, read that book before? Yeah. But the difference is, and, and you know, Latarius, when God changes you, it's a different Because your response thing. is different. The way you think is different. The way you handle the rejection differently. And you have a different level of hope. So exactly. that's, what, that's why I said, why did you want it so much? It's because what I sense is when you go talk about that war room woman, yes. that, that that wife that done made her her war room and you yes. start praying and That's interceding it. and it's like it's unstoppable. Like <laughs> nobody can sway. You can you can tell her right now, I'm found a divorce tomorrow. You can say it again. She'd be like, hmm. <laughs> because her faith is no longer in you. Exactly. That's what's so that's what's so crazy about it and so powerful. It's called crazy faith, is that it's saying that I know how you feel. But I know what God still can do. Exactly. It's when people, I went to my friend's funeral Saturday, uh, Sunday. I mean, Saturday, this past Saturday, Pastor Ricky Tejada. And the man that married me, Pastor Gordon Banks, he stood up there at the funeral at the very beginning and said, I still believe God can raise him from this dead. He said, I still believe that God can have Ricky stand up out of that casket. And we looked around like, this joker has lost his rabbit mind. He didn't care what nobody thought. I thought he was crazy. Because I work with uh, an organization called Southwest Transplant Alliance, where we do organ donations and all that. I shoot the videos and stuff for them. Well, at that point, when somebody's in the casket, they done sucked all the blood out. They done took his organs out. If he's a donor, he has nothing in his body. But he believed... So much in God that he believed that God could raise Ricky from the dead. That's what Tay is saying. Tay said, my husband is dead. I can say, rise, come forth, Lazarus. She can speak yo, speak you this dead marriage back to life. She can speak you back to life. And it sounds crazy because you could be sitting there like, you still can't stop me from filing for divorce. Right. Yeah, right. you still can't. You can have all the hope you want, all the faith that you want. And her faith isn't predicated on your decisions. Her faith is predicated on what God said to her. And she just watching it all play out. Just watching it play out, watching it all play out. It's, it's, it's amazing the level of faith that people get. And if my the guy who married me, Pastor Gordon Banks, can believe that his friend could stand up from that casket, then is it really crazy that she believes that a 25-year marriage can actually, well, back to 25, can, can, can come back to life? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And you know, the, the enemy... Really, that's his job to deceive us, right? And um, that was why I couldn't pray for my marriage because I was being deceived that I didn't love my husband. Yes. And when I became free, um, I started to really see. Like, it's like that, you know, I was blind. I was once blind. Now I can see. Yeah. That was my whole situation. Like I was blind and now it's like, it was like these blinders just come straight off. Right. And you seeing everything differently for what it really is. And I just, I couldn't believe it. And I'm literally doing everything God is telling me to do. And I'm like, I don't understand this God, but okay, I'm gonna do it. And that's, that is what I'm mostly proud of in this entire situation. You know, because God decided, look, enough is enough. And you said you wanted to be new. And we and I kept saying this marriage, the way it is, has to die. That's good. And it did. It, it did. Yes. I don't want that one no more. So, Jewel, when you say it did, why? What changed? What what changed? So for me, <clears throat> you know, I had to be 
I wasn't being honest about my feelings for a long time for fear of hurting her feelings. But slide and, the microphone close to you, uh, please. But um, ultimately, I hurt him anyway. And, yes. Um, so I was like, hmm. so you know what's crazy is <clears throat> I told her I said, hey, you know I didn't seen two attorneys, you know I got the paperwork, so you know just FYI, you know I'm cocky with it. Just yeah, FYI, we, you know, we got I'm to, we got to do you that. know w- what it is, and and um, but oh, he, stop real quick. Why did you say that? What were you, were you wanting a reaction? I wasn't. I wasn't wanting a reaction. I just knew. I knew in my heart that. I was something was saying she's not gonna let you go, and I've said that to people. She ain't gonna let me go. <laughs> I was like, man, I got a real life no fade the track no. <laughs> You're like, oh Lord Jesus, if I, I leave her, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna write a real real note to everybody fade? to my no. kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, but <clears throat> I had moved on this before, you know, and before this isn't the first time that I had expressed that I wanted a, wanted what I wanted a divorce. Yeah, it's the first time I actually went to an attorney and actually had paperwork drawn up to do so. So I was like, you know, um, she came to me. We were sitting and she was talking and I was like, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, I, yeah, all right. mm-hmm. yeah. And she was like, 24 years is worth nothing to you. I was like, yeah, no, no, pretty much. No. Because uh, um, at that point I was, you like, done. I was physically I know. Got done, disconnected. Yeah. I was like, yeah, no, I had started hanging out in the yeah. streets and, you know, kind of yeah. running, but I wasn't, I was still being respectful, but my character was like, no, nah, bro, you know, you, you can talk and all this crap, but uh, you take your butt on to the house. Yeah. So um, I felt like something came and said, Jewel, you're not being fair. You're not, you're not being fair. Um, you have to. My dad, I heard, hear him in my, my mind talking about, you know, you got to do everything possible. You got to be able to walk away and say you've done everything you, you could to try. There it is. And then I was like, Somebody asked me, one of my one of my tribe, hey man, your counseling. I said, man, I don't want to go to no counseling. <laughs> yeah. I said, man, counseling, I said, counseling is cool, but ultimately people are who they are. Yes. That's you what know? I, that's, so excuse I'm, me, I'm rationalizing that. things yeah. in my mind to make it make sense for me to hold against her. Yes. You know, and hold I'm, on, say that again, say it again, say it again. <laughs> people need to hear that. I've been there before, I've done it before. <clears throat> you Say it I'm again. rationalizing things in my mind to make sense to me so I can blame her. That right there. Somebody then, done got set free from that right there. If you <laughs> realize that you can formulate whatever you want to formulate in your head and then make the other person pay the sentence for what you've conjured up in your mind, that's a breakthrough. Continue, brother. Yeah, so I was like, deep sigh. <laughs> okay, you know, I'm not right. You know, it's hard to admit when you're wrong. Yes. Um, because that's another point of vulnerability. Yes. And um, it can be held against you sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, ultimately it's that ult- that maturity again. So yeah. I was like, well, maybe. So one of my tribes said, well, you just need some time then. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know <laughs> what I need. I said, I need to be quiet <laughs> for a little while. Um, so I said, you know what, I'm going to focus on just, just I'm gonna see what happens, and I spoke to you know several tribe members that yeah. I trust with my personal feelings in business, and was like, "What going on?" Because men, we we don't we don't seek guidance at all. Um, I hear what people say, you know, but I don't trust a lot of what people <laughs> say because I mean, ultimately, I've been married 24 years. I've been married longer than most people have been together. Yes. You know? Yes. So I'm like, you can't tell me nothing. I've been married longer than you. I mean, but but there is solace in knowing that we had a little couples group, married married couples that, you know, we glean different things from that I've learned from seeing others. That's how men, we learn from yes. seeing other men. Yes. Uh, and other men taking the time to pour into it. So I was like, what you going to do with Lo? I'm like, they look like I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm just, I'm just. God told me to be still. And people ask me. I said, man, I'm, I'm slow boat to China right now. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm still because ultimately, um, the covenant in marriage. When you ask, you know, for better or for worse, you know, there's a covenant that you that you make a commitment to. Yes. And I know that I had always been committed to the marriage. Um, 
but I wasn't committing to allow her to love me the way God wanted her to or the way I was supposed to love her through God because I didn't know God like that. See, me and God have this. He knows my heart and he knows my relationship with him. And it's 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 battered, you know, um, and I'm having to allow him to work through me to love her because I wasn't loving me. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes all the sense in the And that's a world. revelation that just come across. You know, I'm, 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 I'm. There's no way you can love somebody if you don't know how to love yourself. Yeah. You will hurt them trying to love them. You can be too smothering. You can be too judgmental. You yeah. can be all these things. You like, you just don't appreciate nothing I do. And you like, bro, that ain't love. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's, yeah. it's such a tainted. Now you have the great motive, <laughs> but it's just so raggly that you don't even know how to, yeah. how to give it or display it. And yeah. so that's why I say love starts with oneself. That's the reason why I knew it's God speaking through the both of y'all because that's how God operates. He's not going to say, fix your marriage, fix your marriage, fix your marriage. It's right. not going to work. Right. He says, Tay, come over here. Let me work on you. Jewel, come over here. Let me work on you. Yeah. And then as he's working on the, the uh, both of y'all individually, you'll start watching the marriage do like this. How's this marriage healing this stuff? What is going on? Because I'm being worked on, you've been worked on, and God been so omniscient, which means he's all knowing that he knows what she has to do in order to attract you again. Because that's why I say, why did yeah. you marry her to begin with? She, he knows what you have to do in order for her to be attractive. Cause the one thing that a woman, the first thing that a woman, the most painful thing that you ever said to her is I'm gonna get a divorce from you snatch security away from her. And the number one need for a woman is security. When you talked about how you became vulnerable and you share whatever it was with her and you felt like it felt on deaf ears and the way she responded, respect got snatched from you. And so what happens is, is that because the two major needs that a male needs and what a woman needs not being fulfilled by that partner, it's like, well, I don't even know why we're here. Cause I, I, I don't know what we're doing here. Cause, cause I don't feel secure in this. I don't feel respected and heard in this. Why are we here? We wasting our time. We just need to go ahead and make a decision to move. Cause clearly this ain't where we supposed to be. You ain't happy. I ain't happy. Why are we playing? You know what? Let me say, um, that I used to joke all the time, you know, when people would say, um, Oh, how long have you been married? And, you know, I'll be like, Oh, you know, 20 years, 20, whatever years. Right. And they'll be like, what? You know, they can't believe it. Right. And I say, well, honey child, God mean for us to be together. Cause ain't no way in the world we together on our own, you know? Mm -hmm. So I used to say that all the time. And, you know, our words are, you know, they definitely are powerful and I understand that. But another thing that I want to, you know, even share that again, to be my husband's first time hearing this, it would, God has this way of, you know, letting you know what's about to happen. He gives you that forecast. And it was literally told to me that we were going to get a divorce. Mm. And it was said to me in a way like God said that, right? Mm. And I, and I remember thinking that don't sound right. That God just don't say stuff like how long ago that. was that? How long ago was that when that was said? It was probably a week after we had the argument. Um, but be actually, before we uh, no, it was actually said um, a month, uh, maybe two months before. It was said, right? But it wasn't said directly as you're going to get a divorce. It wasn't said like that. But it was definitely implied, you know? And so, but then when, you know, everything went down and then they physically say, yeah, you know, you're going to get a divorce. And they say all of these things because sometimes God allows you to hear things. But then sometimes that person who's telling you, they got, they kind of go off the track, <laughs> <laughs> you know? They say they put a little bit of themselves in it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Embellish a little bit. Embellish. They ain't prophesying, they prophet line. <laughs> right. And then I was like, so when I go back to the word, I know that God is not. Yeah. Saying, you know, that he he's I know he's for marriage because we don't have, you know, infidelity in our situation. So I, I'm like, I just don't understand this. God. Like, I don't believe this. And I'm like, I know God didn't tell you to tell me to divorce my husband. Like, I know <laughs> that is not what God said. Right. <laughs> and so what. But then after I got in, you know how God and the Holy Spirit would, you know, lead you to do these things. And then he tells you later. 
you know, why you did it. And, you know, and, and I got an opportunity to hear um, a sermon and it was by Dr. Tony Evans. Mm. And this man said that God is going to tell you what's going to happen, but he gives you that grace period for you to change it. Mm. And all, and I just could not believe it. That was my counselor, boy. Dr. Tony Evans counseled me through some stuff a few years ago. Oh my Oof. God. That is an amazing man of God, man. And I've, and I've been getting that teachers through you too. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> you know, I'm telling and, you. but when he said that, and it was like, God telling you me, grace you, period. he gave me a grace period. He's like, so what was going to happen was going to happen. Yeah. Had I not done what the Holy Spirit told me to, to do. intercept it. Exactly. So we all have the power and God, and this is another thing Dr. Evans said, God doesn't tell you how to pray or what to pray for that he hadn't already done. Mm. He already did that, but it's still your responsibility. To line up your will with his. Exactly. Let me so tell you something. my marriage is supposed to be my marriage. He is my husband. So, Jewel, when you hear her say that and you say that she ain't going to let you go, what do you think about that? What I think is that a good thing, bad thing? What do you think about that? Uh, <laughs> that's a little inside joke with the, with the grandbaby um, you know I think that um, she, she's you know honestly man Tavia has been the one that for years that you know I've been running for years I guess you could say from um, us really having the type of relationship that God wanted us to have but because I wasn't I don't say I wasn't ready but emotionally and even spiritually, I wasn't able to accept it. You know, um, I was her, uh, you know, a lot of security. Um, so I was molded to be the foundation. Right. Um, and I watched her build, you know, the house on, on that foundation, but I felt like I wasn't part of that house. Right. And for her to say, I'm supposed to be your husband. You know, she said that to me years ago. And I'm like, Sometimes I'll be like, mm, I mean, you know, forever, ever, 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 <laughs> and ever, 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 <laughs> like infinity, ever, but, you know. <laughs> uh, to death do uh, we part, ever. Yeah, you know, death we part, that part. That you know part. You know, only way out to pine box. You know? <laughs> exactly, um, like, okay. Ooh, okay. That's um, a long time. You know, it's, it's, it's refreshing. I'm, I'm not, again, I'm, I'm not against the institution of marriage because I'm, I'm safe in that space, too. Right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You said something that most men don't say. <laughs> you said that you're safe in the space of marriage. Yeah. yeah. Why do you say that when most men feel like that's the ball and chain? That's a place of restriction. That's a place of you being controlled. That's a place where you ain't getting no booty because your woman's controlling her vagina. It's just bad, 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 bad. <laughs> that's all we hear. How do you say that it's a safe space for you? everybody's relationship is different and you have to make the most of your relationship. Now, um, when I say it's a safe place, all I know is marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I have done been single, so I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't know how to be single. You know and that's saying? why I said, uh, why is you trying to be? Why, 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 why are you playing? I'll take that back. I, I know I would know how to be single, but, <laughs> but um, I'm not, I'm not, that's not, I don't necessarily want to be single. I just wanted to be, I just wanted to be able to be me. And when you, when you do, you're in a marriage vow series, right? Right. And you know, part of the covenant in marriage is you two, one, two, two people become one flesh. There it is. Right. So my mind and the way I was designed, my one flesh means I'm thinking about her before me and everything I do, I put her before me. Right. So, I got over the years, you know, I would tell her, Hey, um, I need you to do this or that. And she thinking, Oh, I don't cook and clean or what, you know, do all this stuff. It's not about that. I was like, you're, and I'm said this to her. I said, you haven't been present. And for her, I had to work. I I'm like, I, right. and so I, I'm like, I, right, whatever, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But I'm, I'm, I'm secure in the fact that she know I have all the time in the world. You know, she'd be gone up doing stuff and um, I'm, I'm mobile. I work remotely. 
I could be on the moon. She would be like, oh, yeah, I'm, oh, I'm at work. I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm at the house. I'm, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm somewhere out in the bar or something, you know, yeah. kicking it. So it, she's never had a trust issue with me in regards to that with other women. Because, yeah, other women look nice and, you know, attractive. And I get hit on all the time. Yeah. But I, I have, I'm a, hit sometimes on I'm all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes I'm oblivious to it, you know. Um, <laughs> trust me, I know you do. <laughs> Come on now. You say he a black, he a, he a black man with a he a black man with a job. Yeah. That's all he <laughs> but my but, but my character is that yeah. is that in the way I carry myself. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm respectful of, of my relationship in the marriage. So And you know what's so crazy about it is that the more respectful that a man is to his marriage, the more attractive it is for a woman to try to get that. It's a crazy thing. Yeah. If, you, if you ever post something like, I love my wife, the woman be like, oh, yeah, good. she's so lucky to have you. Uh, just start DM me saying stuff. You know, you're just an amazing husband. You're just so great. I just wish I had a man like she start planting seeds like that. Yeah. Planting seeds. Yeah. The next thing you know, in the moment that you had an argument, then his mind turns to her and says, see, she appreciates me. Oh, yeah. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? But it's right. the but seeds. Right. It's the but seeds. Just as he said, right. I always knew, I, I've never felt like he would do that. Like, you know, and I'm not saying it's impossible, but the first thing someone had asked me when we were going through this was, do you think it was somebody else? And I said, you know, I actually don't, you know, and even when the enemy tried to plant even that seed, I still couldn't accept that. I was like, no, I just, that's not his character. character. I know him and that's not what he does. And um, so I was always, you know, secure in that. But what, the way he felt and saying, you know, there were things that he would say, I wasn't present or whatever. He needs to understand. And I would tell him, you got to understand, I turned into this person because of how I felt that you were treating me. Yeah, that's a chain reaction. We were not speaking each other's love language. That's good. No. At all. No. Yeah, that's good. Uh -huh. And so... No. When he wasn't doing something, it made me in turn not do something. Mm -hmm. And then we just go on for so long and we're not doing what we need to do for each other. And we both have our perceptions of the other person, right? And, mm -hmm. and that's just how we've been existing all of this time. We never... We never really been to counseling together. We are y'all going individually? We've gone individually, but even but like he said, he would run away from you know that because I do feel like that if we would have gone to counseling, one hundred percent, and we would have been in a different place. Because I've always been willing, um, but he's always not been willing. You know, and then I don't want to keep talking. Oh, I'm talking, man. <laughs> but, and that's I'm the thing. Talking, we, and when we do finally. <laughs> I'm, like, man, I'm tired of talking. <laughs> when we finally go, we gotta have oh, to God. keep going. Oh God! Know? Oh Jesus! Be it be funny, it's like man, I don't got time to be telling y'all this stuff. Like, um, they don't want to talk to their own wife. They've been talking to no stranger. I'm saying what I said. I barely talk to her. Sometimes. <laughs> I don't talk to you. Man. You Come know on, what? No. But this is gonna change. Everything. So, Jules, change. have you thought about going to bears counseling with her? Since you've been going to individual counseling. Well, you know what, my count, my counselor, we talked. We kind of discussed that. And how do you still, feel about that? I was still on. I don't know what I'm gonna do with her. But, uh, <laughs> what I'm gonna do with her? I, don't uh, know. I, mean, I know it's the truth. You know, there's an, there's 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 hope. There's hope. There's an opportunity to go to marriage counseling for her to go with you. Yeah. Why is that so hard, Jewel? <laughs> See, you, no, but you see how he acting right now. Tell me, there's hope now. Let's see, that's how it was when we before we got married. What you gonna do, player? <laughs> see that ultimatum? What you, you gonna see that do? And stuff, then remember man? when I said he gotta be quiet? Like, well, I, hey, how long hey, you wait a minute, be wait a minute. I just started talking to you. <laughs> they got some true. steps up. Yeah, so we say this just got just just started talking. Put a time frame around it. When you say just, when is just Monday? No, <laughs> no, no. From last week. It, Listen. When was it, well, This is what happened. So, mutual friend of ours had something to do. Pull it back for clothes. You keep oh. pushing away. At her house. Oh. And she was oh. like, oh, you want to go? No, 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 no. No, no, no. We have a great friend of ours that uh, his her husband was planning a birthday. And, well, wait. Leading before that conversation, he said something to me. Uh, we were in the kitchen or something. He said something to me. And it led me to say, well, can we sit down and talk? Because we had not talked. And I think by In this four point, months? It, no, this month is four months. As a matter of fact, today makes it four months to the day that we oh, had wow. the argument. <clears throat> um, but um, 
Boy, when I tell you, you can't make this stuff up. You can't. You can't well, make this stuff day. up. But it's for six weeks straight. No he, words. No words. No words. Literally, I would <laughs> like when I say no words. Literally, he's not kidding. I would come into. Yeah, I, I would leave. On. I would leave early in the morning, and I would try to come home late as late as I possibly mm-hmm. could. And um, I would come through the garage and go straight beeline to my bedroom. He. <laughs> hadn't been in the room. He only would come in the room when he had to go to the to our bathroom. Yeah, get some all clothes. Of his get some clothes there, and right? go back clothes and go back upstairs. <laughs> so we were definitely separated in the house, and there were even a few times that we went a few days we didn't even see each other at all, and um, so there was no conversation. And then um, we had a brief conversation. Oh, I want to stop right there real quick and ask a question. Mm-hmm. How did that feel? I want y'all to tell me how did that feel? What? To just be roommates and just be like avoiding each other because you gotta it's it's actually thought out like when you when you operate like that it's not just by accident you think you be like okay I hope he he probably says I'm gonna go and walk in here and I hope he don't you (laughs) actually you actually strategize that she's gonna walk out yeah she's gonna walk back she coming in she gonna she on the phone who she talking to let me go upstairs yeah yeah exactly that's exactly he definitely didn't want and when I would say something if I said anything he'll be in his phone and don't look up nothing she got a one word answer yeah. No. Yep. Bye. I. It was just. I mean, and this is him not looking at me, and I'm I mean, just it's, like, it, wow. I mean, it's kind of, it, you know. I mean, it's how did it feel? Now. How did it feel? For me, it. Um, uh, I didn't like it because he know, and I felt like he was doing this to me because he knows what hurts. that hurts me. Yep. And he was doing that on purpose. Were you doing it on purpose, Jewel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You being transparent, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I did it. Yeah, he was like, uh huh. You are gonna feel this? You are gonna yeah. feel every oh, bit of this? Was, uh, oh man, man, he was. But he look, was Terry's putting it on. You gotta understand, like for me, <laughs> the point of um, I we were disconnected. Yeah, yes. yeah, I know. And Very. you know, you unplug it. I'm I'm a lights on, lights off guy. When, yep. Once I turn the lights off, it's off. It's like boom, it's off. Oh, Everything shut God. down. Can't revive some of that stuff. <laughs> But how we got, okay, so what happened was, let me tell you, so you know we have a few uh, of our close friends that have been close to this situation since it started. And, um, you know, he would talk to the husbands. I would talk to the wives. And, you know, the husband might come back and be like, he gone, girl. He gone. You know. I was, He's right. like, you, you need to start making some plans. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> and I, was, I was just like, wow, okay. And so would that kill your hope? Um, you know, when a God, close friend tells you Yeah, that. but but it, but it's this thing that I had with God that it just meant different for me. You know, even though they said that to me, they didn't realize I was already in this, you know, this, this trust room factor with God. With God. Yes. Yeah. And I was just letting God lead me, honestly. And so um, so a good friend of ours. He planned um, an event for his wife. And he initially, he had started planning it a lot sooner than my husband found out about it. Because he first came to me and was like, hey, you know, I'm doing this thing for my wife. Uh, I ain't told your husband yet because I don't know if he would come anyway. You know, so, but then I guess as time got closer, you know, our friends cannot accept us not being together. Mm -hmm. And so he finally, I guess, said something to Jewel. And then we start having a conversation. He said, Hey, um, I know you, they're having this event this weekend. I was invited, but I won't go because I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. And I said, well, the only way I'm going to be uncomfortable if you ignore me, <laughs> like, like I'm not there. Cause he did that before. And I'm like, like, I'm not like, dude, I'm right here. Like, you, you know, we still live in the same house. Right? He said, you know, he's still married. He's going to act right. like I'm a stranger. Oh, and so, I did. and what's crazy. So Out of we, public. Yes. Oh, he did that. He oh, did man. that. That'd be a whole, that'd be part two of our podcast. But, I was like, oh man, that, that, it's funny, but it's not. No. <laughs> It's funny. It's funny, but it's not. I'm not even getting into that part right now. But so, but the the break, the, the what happened uh, was we go to the event right, and we were on this party bus, and we and I remember he got there before me because I had to work, so I came from work, and I remember I get on the bus. Someone was sitting next to him, and then they saw me, and they was like, "Oh, well, let me get up." So Tavi can. And I was like, "Ah." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, I'm like, God, dog. I wasn't. Uh, she gonna sit next to me so on the bus. They're like, I, oh, I, oh, here, Tony, sit next to you. I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, 
They don't know. Like, what we going through? Oh, Lord. So that is we, so true, boy. Get on the bus Being so stubborn there. like a little kid. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I don't yeah. know. At, at first, he was kind of like not really, you know, saying nothing or yeah. whatever. And then, but as the time go on, you know, we get some to a place. He ends up buying me a drink. I was like, oh, Miss Willow bought me a drink. <laughs> Okay, you know, so <laughs> that part, you man. know, it's and that. it was a good day, right? Yeah. Had a good day. The next day was a good day as well. Stop. And what made you buy her a drink? Because that's like calling truce. You didn't want to even sit next to you. You're ignoring all this time, and then you decide to go ahead and say, like T Pain, let me buy you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and then he walked over like it was old times, right? He was like, "Hey, he, he trying to holler at you? you. Yeah, want, yeah, he trying to holler at you." Trying, you know, I think at the moment, um, so let's back up a minute. So when I told her that time I wanted a divorce, there was a big release off of me, right? I felt the weight lifted, right? Um, because I was expressing my unhappiness. Yes, right? finally, honestly, and openly with her. Yeah. So in that moment, I didn't have any reservations because we weren't husband and wife in my mind at that point mm -hmm. we were just i, I mean that. i knew she was my wife yeah i know what you're talking about we weren't operating as husband and wife yeah you didn't have that responsibility right. of, yeah. of, of so yeah so i was like ah, it's just routine for me to, yeah. to take care of her right you know like, okay i'm going to the bar you want something to drink you know what you want or, or i just go bar here you know got your drink or whatever make sure you're good so and that's what it, all it was at that point you know and then me. Oh, yeah, it hit differently. Yeah, it, 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 it hit differently. It's like it's like you didn't know that you put the first step towards dating her again. You know, and it's like, and, and even though you don't even, that wasn't even your intention, that's how yeah. much we don't know and what God had to just plant a seed in her to give her a little bit more faith to keep praying a little bit harder, a little bit more hope to say, God, I see oh, you working this out. There's a lot of people praying. A lot of people praying. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of people praying. Yeah. Exactly. You, you know, see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you buy the drink, maybe I'm just doing what I normally do. And God said, He think he knows something. He don't. Yeah, right. he, he really think he just he, he in control of all this. He really right, think it. Right. You don't. You just that the, part. Yeah. The minute the that minute part. that see what you did wrong, if you wanted to really leave her. It would have been the if you said that to me. Yeah. He said, Why you ain't fired yet? <laughs> <laughs> I said, huh? He said, uh huh. If you're going to be gone, you'd be gone. I was like, man, let me get off the phone with you. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 I, said, I got the paperwork. Man. I got the paperwork. The paperwork don't mean nothing. I got the paperwork. It don't without mean being nothing. Filed, you know, yeah. it's just like, yeah. yeah. I got, I because it, it makes you feel secure. It's like a kid. Yeah. And I ain't insulting you as a man because we all have this. If it's like a kid grabbing my toy and say, I'm not going to play with you anymore. But then the next day you go play with it. You know what I'm saying? We all go through these temper tantrums and it's real. Now, the real part, I will never take away the severity of what you were going through because it's real. Yeah. You both said that this marriage can't continue the way it is. Yeah. So you got to kill that thing yeah. and resurrect something beautiful, yes. resurrect something new, resurrect something that's whole, resurrect something where you have trust and and, 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 and vulnerability in the relationship. Yes. I said the greatest thing for a man, I had an episode and a lot of women debated this. I said the, the greatest thing, uh, I said, what's greater than love? I said, it's trust. Mm -hmm. A man can love you all day and divorce you. He can sit there and say, I love you. Cause you're the mother of my child. You my ex-wife, I love you. But he will leave you if he don't trust you. Yeah. If he can't trust you yeah. with his heart, yeah. he'll be like, I can't try. I can't be vulnerable with you. Vulnerability is just trusting someone with your most intimate and secret things to say, I'm going to be vulnerable with you. I'm going to show you my insecurities. And I trust that it's going to land safely. And then you're going to protect me and you're going to cover me. And you're going to make me feel better by telling you that than if I hadn't told you that. That's what yeah. vulnerability is. Yeah. And so, and so I say it all the time, women's arguing with me all day. I didn't know it's not. I said, okay. I said, argue all you want to. I said, how many times have a dude broke up with you and say, you know, I still love you, right? I'm gonna uh, love you for the rest of my life. Yeah, but they don't love like, you. We're like, no, you don't. <laughs> you know, but it's it's in this communication that has been our biggest problem our entire marriage. It's been because when he feels like, you know, oh, let me tell you the one thing he said to me, and this is when I knew it was just the enemy talking, and I just felt so bad, you know. So we had this conversation one time, and he says to me, you know, I. You have this insatiable um, need of 
fire in you, you know that, and I know you're going to be successful. Like I see it and I know you're going to be successful, but I don't think I'm the man that's supposed to share this success with you. And I'm like, but you, my husband in my mind, I'm thinking you yeah, got the enemy, the enemy. How is long ago was that? This was, um, whatever week it was, he, he had gone out of town. It was that Monday. We had that conversation. You went out of town that Friday. Yeah. That was in uh, July. Yeah, and when he said that, I was just like, "Wow!" Like you don't even realize. I did. I said, "I said, I know. I see you destined for success, but I'm not supposed to be a part of that journey." That's deep. And that's and, like and, and that's very that painful journey. because painful. Yeah. to me, I'm like, "So you gonna let the enemy take your success? We together. We together. When I succeed, you succeed, and that's how I always thought. But I will say, I didn't communicate that the right way." Yeah. Oh, so what you say when he said that? Well, I'm saying she said no because I was no. headed out of town. That <laughs> <laughs> but she could send the text message and well, say, no, no, "This no, hurt no, me." But what did I do? Let me tell you. Oh my God, I'm telling y'all. Anybody that's going through their issues with their marriage and and they are trusting God to do something, God is definitely going to do it because you are. This is unbelievable, and we're still in our testimony, right? Yeah, you know, it's still, still being written. Storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're definitely coming some out. There's some sun shining through, though. Absolutely, but um, what's crazy is we had that conversation on that Monday, and he says to me, "What I am for sure is that I still want to get this divorce. That I'm going through with this divorce, right?" And I was just like, wow, like I couldn't believe it, right? Because here I am, I've been praying mm -hmm. and and I'm not seeing him change his mind or change whatever. And I'm just like, Lord, what are you talking about? <laughs> like you told me to do all this. And he's still saying this, you know, the next day. Oh my God. I run into someone that I had not seen in over 15 years. Mm. The same woman who helped me with when we were supposed to get a divorce in ten, ten, when we were in year 10. The same woman, and she wasn't even supposed to be in that store. She just had gone into the store, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, we, you know, then we have this conversation, and she says, let me give you some, um, I'm going to give you some blessed So She prayed with me literally in the middle of the store. This is the week that he was getting ready to leave to go out of town. This was on that Tuesday. And then, you know, the Holy Spirit be telling you to do stuff that you be like, now, come on now. But you still got to do it, right? So God, the Holy Spirit tells me to cover my husband as he getting ready to go out of town. And prior to us having that conversation, we had not talked at all. So then he reveals to me, God reveals to me, even though that conversations were hard for you to hear, I needed you to have that conversation because in other, otherwise you wouldn't have been able to touch him and cover him because he wouldn't have never let you near him. So I needed That's to have good. that That's conversation good. to be able to put my blessed oil on him before he left. So what I did was I that what you did to me? Yes, that's why you were safe. Boo. I don't wonder why. I, oh, was that? That was why yeah, I was safe. walking out the room and she jump up and hug me. I, I had was to just hug like, him and, and yeah, I yeah, him. God yeah. Told you, me slipped to you slipped that. him. You slipped him. Yeah, God told me to do <laughs> that. You slipped him. Man. I'm just revealing. Oh, I'm just revealing the goodness of the Lord. <laughs> that's you know? good. But so yes. you jumped up. Well, and while he's walking out the door. He, I say, God, well, how am I supposed to do this? Like, I don't know when he leaving and all that. When I tell you, I was like, you'll know. He he would not have ever said anything to me. He, he just literally, be gone. He would have just left. But that morning, he walked in and said, I'm about to leave. That morning, prior to that morning, he, wasn't even talking he to walks you. out the door, don't say a word. And I was like, oh, that's my yeah. cue. <laughs> Look, I was gearing up for the hug like for two days. I was like, okay, how I'm doing? Two days. Two days. I was like, how I'm doing? I'm gonna go in. I was like, like God, how I'm supposed to say it? What I'm, what I'm supposed to say? Like I don't know what to do. But I love it. But the fact that I saw this woman and I didn't have blessed oil with me. And yeah. The fact that she gave this to me and it was like so divine. Mm. And um, the fact that we had the conversation again, had we not had the conversation, even though he said what he mm -hmm. said, I wouldn't have been able to touch him. And when I hugged him, he actually didn't reject me. And and what's really crazy again, I'm just revealing things. Talk. They don't know. Let, let don't him know, know what God been doing behind the scenes. Goodness. <laughs> let him know. When he left, we've been out of town without each other a number of times. But when he left that time, I felt empty. I felt so empty. And I was like, 
what is, oh, my heart. And you know what? I know that the enemy attacks your heart and my marriage is my heart. That's my heart. <clears throat> Jewel, how do you feel hearing that? Hearing how God, I did a documentary of me adopting my my son over yeah. there that's running that called Pursuing Armani. Armani didn't know behind the scenes all the stuff that I was doing, all the stuff that God was leading me to do to pursue him in his brokenness. And um, man, we had a conversation before um, we started the podcast and we had went by Krispy Kreme and got some donuts. And he prays over every thing he consumes. Right. And he prayed over the donut. I said, Armani, you pray over everything. And I said, and before he could finish the sentence, or because he always responds the same way. And I said, I know you've, you've always gone without. And he has grown up starving, begging for food. Oh, it was a scripture that I was reading that was on my Facebook page. That's what brought it up too. And it said that it was a, a Facebook memory from 2016. And I, and I, and I, uh, read, the, the, the status and it said, uh, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging bread. I was talking about how I was struggling and all that stuff during that time. And then God used somebody to bless me with this, with this investment in my clothing line and all that. And he said, is that true? He said, where's that scripture? Cause anytime you say a scripture around our mind, am I going to zero in? I'm like, well, hold on. What's the scripture? He said, well, I remember begging for bread. I remember that. I said, that's because you are under the, the, the curse of your mom's decisions. You know, she's doing drugs. She's taking the money. Y'all had money. She just, Smith it on drugs or whatever. And I said, but have you ever been begging for bread where you're starving? Look at what God did from taking you from way to that situation to being in this thriving environment. That's how much God loves you and pursues you. So I say that, that you looking like you doing all this. What did you do it all? What? That's because God is pursuing you through your wife. He's pursuing your heart. He's pursuing your mind. When she hugged you, he hugged you. When mm. she's praying for you, God prays for you. When you go to counseling and, and she's praying something and the counselor says something that unlocks something in your brokenness, that's because God is healing those wounds. God is so intentional about pursuing our hearts. The fact that when I called you and met you in Costco, that wasn't by just no happenstance. We ain't never ran into each other nowhere, ever. Know. Ever, ever, ever. We live in the same freaking city. We do not see each other. You know what I'm saying? And the city ain't yeah. that big for us not to run right. into each other, but we right. never see each other. But a week after I talked to her, that happens. And it's just coincidence, happenstance. Then you say, you give me an end when you say, yeah, I've been on my friend podcast. We talk about relationships. I'm going to jump on that because I, I, I can hear the Holy Spirit. Oh, you do? So you'll get on there and talk about that? Yeah, I will. Yeah, I'll do that or whatever. Will you do it with your wife? I just threw it just like that. I, said, I was I said, like, ah, oh, man. He said, ah, oh, man. Uh, I said, I, he called. He said, I said, you know, we literally just start talking. He did. I said, that's fine. He said, that's fine. Like, and, then, right. and then he said, and I said, um, he said, well, I don't even know a schedule. I don't know what uh, whatever it is. Said, when you want to do it? Her, he said, you got to call her. And he said, I, I said, we can do it on Monday. We can do it on Labor Day. And I said, he said, well, I don't know what time or whatever. And I said. We'll work it out. You pick the time. What about 10 o'clock? You a morning person? I want to make sure it fit with his yeah. schedule. Yeah. Are you a morning person? Man. Yeah, I'm a morning person. 10 o'clock good for you? Yeah. Tell you what's up. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Your husband wants to do the podcast. He agreed to do the podcast. What? How in the world did you get them to do that? It ain't me. It's the Holy Spirit. God did that. Are you available at 10 o'clock? You said, I certainly am. I said, come looking fine. Come looking good. <laughs> well, we were together. We've been hanging out like this week. But yeah. see, look how look how crazy that is, though. And I ain't even want to hang out with it before. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But and look at oh, that. Yeah. Look at that. No, I'm not, and I'm being transparent. No, you I'm gotta not, be because it's other people in that situation yeah. right now yeah. where they're not talking to each other. They live in the same doggone house and do not speak with each other. I have a friend that has what was married and they don't didn't speak to her husband. They lived in separate rooms for two years. And I'm like, how do you go through that for two years? Yeah, That's crazy. because people are afraid to change and the marriage will not change. So if the problem exists and nobody is addressing it and you just letting the Goliath just sit around and lay up with you, yep. you're like, hey, how y'all doing? You're like, this is how it's normal. The kids think it's normal now. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go to daddy's room. I'm going to go to mommy's room. You know, and it's like, that's y'all got rooms now? Like that's yeah. norm. That's normal. I, I knew that I didn't want to stay in a marriage like this. I knew that I, I mean, and at the time I didn't know I wanted to be 
you know, still in the marriage with him. So again, that's something that I don't even know he realized that, you know, when he said he wanted a divorce, like he was controlling the situation. And it was just like, dude, I ain't happy either. I ain't been happy either. You, I know, would, I knew that you know, but, but once I wasn't <laughs> blind anymore, I knew that I wanted to be married to him, but I wanted him to be a new man. And I wanted to be a new, so one of my, some of my prayers are this and not ladies, this can, this is a great prayer and it's good for men too. But when in my prayers, I would say, you know, um, God bless my husband with a new wife and let her be me. Oh, Jesus. And did you, did you hear that's that? what I pray. <laughs> I heard it. That yes, is sir. exactly I what it. I pray. And, and I, I want to, I want a new marriage, but I want my new marriage to be with this man. That's what I want. We met. How did we meet? Oh my gosh. Well, Terry's, you and I had been connected on Facebook, but never encountered each other. How we became Facebook friends, I have no idea. Me when neither. I have no idea. Um, and the funny part is, when I was planning our twenty year, we wasn't talking then. Wait a minute. Tell we, us. Had, we had we was <laughs> not talking week before the twentieth run viral renewal went down. We was into it. I was like, I won't have. I, well, I, I, I well, it wasn't, wasn't no, it wasn't the weekend, but no, it was leading up to it. But because by the time, no, by the time she the was like, I, came, we did all this and we, oh, I'm having this viral renewal. <laughs> because I'm telling you, even back then in my mind, I was I'm like, like man, we married. I, ain't, I ain't paying for it. We care. married. That's what I was thinking. But to go back oh, to how you and I connected, um, I knew that I wanted to have video. Cause I, hmm. I'm like, we married. I don't care yeah. about what he's talking about. We, we doing this. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted video and somehow your video that you had did for Kirk Franklin's um, wife. And yeah, do you know, Kirk Franklin's Kirk Franklin, daughter. His wife anniversary is our anniversary. It's the same anniversary. We're, wow. They're a year, um, a year before us. So they got married in 96. It was 97, same day. Crazy. You saw the video yeah. I did that me and my boy Tony did and our team for Carrington, his daughter, yes, their yes. wedding. And I was like, oh, my God. And I was like, oh, my God, we're Facebook friends. I'm going to reach yeah. out to him. And I reached out to you. And I said, um, I'm going to do this viral renewal with my husband. It's going to be 20 years. We never had a wedding. We're going to do this event. And I really want video. Tell me what your cost is. And you came back and you didn't know me from Adam. And you came back and you said, now, wait a minute. You telling me that mm. you never had a wedding and you guys have been married for 20 years. What? And then I was like, yeah, you said, okay, I'll do it. You said, but I can't bring the crew now. <laughs> it's going to be me. It's just going to be me. He <laughs> said, and you better not tell nobody <laughs> that I'm going to do it for this cost. And it was a low cost and I never told nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and it was low, a low, low, it was a low, low cost. And man, you came and the crazy part is I had been working with other videographers for a number of years and it would take them months, a weeks, months. Our anniversary was on Friday, January 20th. That Monday, mm -hmm. following Monday morning at 7.30 a.m., you called me and said, check your email. Yep. I was like, wait, what? I checked my email, man. It was the most beautiful video. And I was like, it's Jula. Wake him up. Let's watch this. Watch it. I want to hear the reaction. Let me tell you this. And I'm going to share something about why that was so important. Now, um, seven days, actually six days prior to your 20-year uh, vow renewal, I had walked in. Of the, in the in the bedroom of the girl that I was dating and saw her in bed with another dude. Mm. I was broken. So what I wanted to see is love. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to witness is love. I'm writing a whole movie about that whole thing and what led to me being able to produce this podcast. I just want to see it. I wanted to be able to celebrate someone else that is getting it right in 20 years. I believe in sowing seeds into what I desire and what I want. It didn't matter to me whether or not y'all were on speaking terms or not or whatever. All I do know is y'all made it to 20 years. All I did know yeah. is that y'all uh, started out as a young couple, 
struggling a little bit and y'all were building each other and y'all were building legacy. Y'all had these three amazing daughters that y'all are showing what it looks like for a black man to love their black mama and vice versa. That's all I cared about. And I said, whatever I got to do to plant a seed in that, I'll plant a seed in that, which is a great transition. And I want y'all to watch this before. I want y'all to watch this. So we, we didn't have a wedding when we first got married um, because at the time we were um, living in an apartment and I didn't want to live in an apartment anymore. So we went looking for a house and I basically said to my wife, we need to spend all that money on a wedding when we can spend that money to get in the house. Just, you know, me feeling safe. I feel safe with my husband. I want you for myself every single day. Slip my world on fire. You set my world on fire. I don't know what I do without you. Mommy and Daddy, we just wanted to say we love y'all and how, so much. We love you. how proud we are that y'all made it to 20 years. And we wanted to say that y'all's relationship is an inspiration for us. Daddy, yes. thank you for teaching us how a man is supposed to treat a woman. And Mommy, right thank on. you for allowing us to see how a woman is supposed to be and treat their man. Y'all so fake, but y'all anyway, so real. Anyway, congratulations to many more. <laughs> so twenty Feliz <laughs> 20 yeah. años anniversary. <laughs> anniversary died. It Absolutely. is because of you two that we, we are where we are now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we just want to thank you guys so much for that. And we love you guys for that. Uh, I really owe so much to you guys. You have been a true... Uh, testimony of how love should be. I comfort you in times of distress, encourage you to achieve all your goals. I laugh with you and cry with you, grow with you in mind and spirit, always respect you, be open and honest with you, cherish you for as long as we both shall live. You're the angel promised to me from heaven up above. God said to me one day as a young man while I was feeling unloved. He said, I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm going to give you exactly what you need. <laughs> you were made just for me, mm. and I love you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I just need you. I don't know what it is you do. I just want you. I just need you. I don't know what it is you do. Thank y'all for showing me, giving me reference to 20 years. All right, action. Action. What? <laughs> I said action. Happy 20th wedding anniversary, sister and Bila. Love you. I want to apologize in any way possible, because I was not comparing your kids to a dog. Well, yeah, that was a little weird. <laughs> we will be like you two. But we don't have kids, but we got dogs. <laughs> it wasn't weird, it was just saying that they raised some phenomenal kids and we just, hopefully that we do the same thing too when we raise our little, uh, a puppy. our newborn you, look, in our house. You see house you're going also. back to it again though. A mom with love. I was there when you guys got married. I know the struggles that you've gone through, and 
and I love you guys so much. I love this couple because they are our travel couple. We travel together. We do a lot of things together. You see pictures of me, you probably see her. I don't necessarily want her in all my pictures, but you see her. <laughs> friend will stick closer to you than a brother. They will be there for you when you need them and applaud you during your achievements. You guys are awesome. Continue on Forget it. for another 20 Cut. plus years. Cut. We're going to try to catch you guys. Love you guys. Oh. I'm excited. Uh, you seem to be, have been excited. I'm good. Everything was good. The venue was great. The people was great. The cake was great. The food was great, even though I ain't really get a lot of food. I started you messing up my dance off. You know, you, my boys was waiting for me to get in there, but you messed it up. Thanks. Okay, whatever. I'm Thanks. sorry. That's 20 years. And 20 more to come. What? No! no. <laughs> do, it, do it, do it again, do it loud, that was good. Do it alone, man. Do it low. Okay, come on. Wait, no! <laughs> and we're going to do two rows. I set my world on fire. He took my <laughs> I actually showed that to somebody and she was like, What are you talking about? Y'all not friends. Y'all friends. That was friends right I'm try, there. I'm trying to tell you. It's because of what the enemy tries to convince us of. Yeah. Um, what do you think when you look back at that, Jewel? What do I think? Yeah. Um, you said you was in that you are y'all were in a similar situation during that moment. Not quite as severe as this one, but it was a disconnect. <clears throat> yeah, I think, you know, it's, it, you know, it, it gleams of happier times. And, you know, mom, my mom was saying, you got to remember the good, not the bad. Because the bad will always seem to try to outweigh the good. And that's not always the case. Um, and it just kind of, you know, goes back to what I said, why you're afraid of being great, you know, at anything you do and put your energy into. So... <clears throat> marriage is hard, man. You know, people don't understand you're not necessarily making a commitment to the person. You're making a commitment to the to the to the covenant, to the vows. And you know, for me, it's a uh, I'm I'm I've been struggling with you know, um, I've never had a problem with commitment. Obviously, I wouldn't have married her and agreed to it regardless of how it was it done. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's just um, you gotta <clears throat> you gotta want it, and you gotta want to be different. And sometimes I don't. I'm just you know. I felt like I was tired, right? And mm -hmm. I've asked to be renewed and discover my heart. And because she's you know she's like, well, what do you want? People, are, well, what do you, what do you want? What do you want a new woman? I'm like, I, I don't know, cause I don't know. You know, I know that I want to be. Um, I want to be happy, but I had to also realize can't nobody make me happy. I got to make myself happy, right? So, um, you know that that it's it's uh, it tears me up a little bit, you know, because it was a very emotional time for us. Close your eyes for, for real quick. Y'all are in court. In the middle of a pandemic, y'all may have showed up by Zoom, different residences. And the judge, with just a series of questions, comes to the conclusion and gives y'all what y'all never thought that y'all would see, but y'all spoke these words into existence mm -hmm. and said, y'all are now divorced. You're a single man. Tavia, you're a single woman. Your three amazing daughters and that beautiful grandchild, they visit y'all at separate residences. You introduce them to a new normal. 
the woman that you can't even imagine that you want, Jewel, you're out there searching for. Tavia, you didn't want the divorce, but you were forced into this situation, but you have to accept it. Open your eyes. How did that make you feel? Jewel? Empty. And that's why you got to fight. Yeah. yeah. How did that make you feel, Tavia? Oh, um, I already imagined that. And that's why I did fight. The fact that you can articulate, Jewel, that you would feel empty getting the very thing that you want, having the freedom that you so desired, quote unquote, because at the end of the day, you don't even desire freedom. I'm listening to you. You don't want freedom. You just want <laughs> your wife to be the best version of herself. That's what we all want. Yeah. That's what any married couple should want. But it can't be orchestrated or manipulated through a divorce. And it's not that you're manipulating. You're really tired. You don't want it. But what you really, truly want is not a divorce. You want to be happy, like you said. You want to be thriving in the marriage. And if you listen, she wants the exact same thing for you of herself. She says, repeat what you said a minute ago, Tavia, about being the new woman, a new wife. Oh, yes. um, I pray to God to bless my husband with a new wife and let her be me. That's what you wanted. That's what you wanted. That's what she's becoming. That's what you're becoming as the new husband, the 3.0 version of Jewel mm -hmm. for her. The marriage that y'all once knew had to die. Oh, yeah. Because y'all was causing so much pain to each other. Y'all showing y'all daughters what pain looks like. But if you hear what they said, they didn't say nothing about the pain. They said, thank you, mom, for showing me what it looks like to love a man. Thank you, dad, for showing us what it looks like to love a woman. I know they've heard countless of arguments. They've heard all this type of stuff. Yeah. But do they give a dang about that? On video, they said, thank you, because what you're showing them that everything ain't perfect. But we stayed together. Now, I don't believe in people being miserable and just toxic relationships and all that type of stuff. Sometimes divorce is necessary. Yeah. But this ain't that time. So God brought both y'all all the way on this podcast to confirm to Tavia <laughs> that um, don't give up. And confirm to me. And confirm to you. She is a serial stalker. And she's a serial stalker. <laughs> and she is not letting you go because you are hers. I said that. <laughs> and she is not letting you go no. because you are hers. Period. Those vows mean something. They meant something to you and they meant something. You said something so profound. You said, hey, I have to listen to it. Hey, no matter how we got here, no matter when I was 22 years old, sometimes y'all conflicting on how old you was, yeah. but you're here. And you said, one thing I recognize is that I'm here and I honor my vows. I honor. Y'all brought some amazing kids into this world that have an opportunity to see something that's very, very rarely seen a couple thrive. Y'all, when I saw that, I was like, people married 20 years. I don't, they don't even look that old to be married 20 <laughs> years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, think about it. People not going to see that. I can, like, it's very hard to get to that point because most people are marrying older now. Yeah. yeah. So, so, um, if I got married next year, I'll be 44. And if I stay married until death do us part or whatever, and I die 80 something, that's 40 years. If y'all get to 80, what that look like? Ooh. You know what I'm saying? It's like crazy. It's like, we've been married for 60 years. You'd be yeah. like 60. Y'all yeah. yeah. been with each other for as long as. Yeah. Yeah. That's what oneness looks like. And I guarantee you what I find so fascinating is that when people, when one of the spouses dies, the other person dies shortly after. That's what oneness looks like because you became so one mm -hmm. 
that the other, but they'd be like, oh, he just died from a broken heart. No, they died because they understood what one is. They couldn't physically function without the other person. Physically, yeah. just couldn't. They whole body. How you going to make yourself die? Your right. whole body just shut down. Right. You can't do that. I can sit here and say, die, Latera, die. I'm going to open my eyes up and say it didn't work. Yeah. But when these people get married and the other spouse dies, and then you go, how did they die three days later? There wasn't even nothing wrong with them. Yeah. Because they became one. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I lift up this amazing couple before you right now, God. You heard their hearts. You know the need. You have been pursuing their healing. You have been pursuing their restoration. Matter of fact, I want y'all to join hands. Let's just join hands. We're going to join hands. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be just a small part of this story. That you're providing healing and restoration and growth through this situation, God. You have been pursuing the both of them for such a time as this for you to bring forth a marriage that they haven't even seen to be a witness and a light to other people that are broken and marriages that are on the brink of divorce, that you're going to provide healing and restoration for those couples in the name of Jesus. Satan, I come against you right now. Take your hands off of the Whitlows right now. No weapon formed against them shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against them shall be condemned for this is their inheritance because they're servants of you. God, we stand on your promises. You said in your word that what you have joined together, let no man put asunder. Not even Jewel, not even Tavia. They can't even end their marriage. So God, we thank you for the power that you have shown us, how you strategically been aligning things before we could ever even imagine it. That you would even use me to shoot this video many years ago for it to provide hope today because you're an omniscient God. We thank you and we give you all the praise and glory and adoration. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. What I would like for y'all to do as we end this podcast is hopefully Tavia can get this right with y'all handshake. Oh my God. Oh. I don't even remember how to that do that. Y'all just saw the video. Y'all got to the do the, y'all got the wit low. Wait, wait, I don't even remember. What y'all just do? Y'all need, need to fast wait. forward the video? Uh, wait, so wait. Uh, 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 uh. And no. yeah, just like that. Messing it up. No, <laughs> no, but let's do it. Uh, 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 uh. Wit low. There it is. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Make sure y'all follow them on social media accounts. Thank y'all so much for being so transparent Absolutely. and lit, man. How do y'all feel? I feel amazing. <laughs> I do. I feel good. I, but I've been feeling good for a minute, you know. That's good. About this, yeah. Jewel, how you feel? I feel good, man. I mean, I had I had gotten to a place here recently. I had a revelation that you know um, about you know um, trying to be that trying to be different. You know, being different, right? And being someone renewed. So I was like, ah, I'll give it a chance. You know <laughs> no, I but my, you know, I'll my marriage, you know what I'm saying? I, I had to really, I had to really take inventory. Yes. Of me not dealing in, in, um, in the flesh and, and listen to the spirit. You know, cause I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, but I feel good. I mean, I'm, I'm open and I hope. Well, I'm encouraging y'all to make sure that you, Jewel, take the lead and set up a, a counseling session, a group counseling session with you, her, and your therapist and start repairing that beautiful thing. Because it's still beautiful. As ugly as y'all may feel that it looked, it's beautiful. And I tell you, I, I'm a visionary, so I can see stuff. It's yeah. people I know that have gotten divorced and friends I have. I'd be like, yeah, y'all should get divorced. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's like, I, I no, just know. You know. Yeah, you yeah. just know. You be like, it's fine. Like, it's not, there's nothing that can come out of that. Right. This ain't one of those situations. Thank y'all for watching the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Y'all give it up for the Whitlows. <laughs> All right. Wasn't this episode absolutely phenomenal? I mean, it's, this is what I want y'all to do. Those diehard prayer warriors out there, I want y'all to lift up the Whitlows, add them to your daily prayers so we get an opportunity to watch God heal, restore, and move. You've already seen it in this just this two hours how God showed up and showed out. Um, if you notice, they were a little distant when the episode started, and um, as it kept going on, started laughing with each other and... and um, 
Words can't describe how I feel right now. Dear future wifey, Dear future wifey, no matter what we go through, let's make an oath to always keep open lines of communication. The moment the devil tries to convince us shutting down is an option, let's get plugged into the source of our love and get recharged. We'll make it to death do us part by consistently dying to our flesh daily. We'll become one by removing any spirit of competition and moving as a unified body. A house divided against itself cannot stand. You are my teammate. We're partners. Purpose partners. You bring vision and excitement to my life. Pray for me when I'm weak. I'll pray for you in your time of needs. Let's never get discouraged by the rough days we'll have. never get discouraged by the rough days we will face. Let's be intentional to view those moments as opportunities for a miracle. Our prayer life will serve as the foundation for our love life. Our intimacy will flow from our intimacy with our Lord and Savior. We can do this. Looking forward to creating a unique handshake with you, my love. Whitfield, your future hubby. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.